to the Non-Binary Show. I'm Mika and I'm non-binary. I'm Sam and I'm bisexual. We've been going out for less than a year and we're already getting married. And that means there's a lot we still don't know about each other. So each episode we pick a different topic and have an honest conversation. Today, letting children see queer people. Yeah, hide your kids. <laughs> Non-binary show is back on track. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason we put an explicit warning on our episodes is because we swear. We can't be ours to not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a lot of cutting for you. <laughs> yeah, so do you want to start the thing or do you want to just talk about it in general uh, first? I think we'll just jump straight into it then. So the reason I wanted to do this topic is because I found a news article uh, about where else but America. Uh, The school district in Utah has suspended their entire literacy program after a child brought in a trans positive children's book into school and they wanted their teacher to read it to the class. The teacher had never seen this book before, but thought, why not? Because one look at the cover and you think, oh, it's so nice. It's it's a good, it's a nice looking book. And then the teacher was reading it for the first time out loud to the kids. And she realized that it's about trans positivity and inclusivity. And she didn't want to answer any of the kids' questions about what it means to be trans, what is gender, what is sex. Some of the kids were asking what puberty was and she didn't want to answer those questions either because these kids are very small. Yeah. And the entire district in the state, they thought the, the best solution was to just get rid of the entire literacy program altogether. <laughs> um, Hide the children from literature. From, from all books. Just to be on the safe side, district spokesperson Doug Perry told AP that they are not cancelling the programme, but are pausing it to review every book on their list to ensure that similar concerns are not brought up again. The teacher just flat out made a mistake. That book is not appropriate at the grade level it was being shared. So, sarcasm on... Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. Imagine getting kids to know... What transgender is. Because they would never be transgender. No. Yeah, it's, it's something that you're supposed to go through after puberty. Yeah, just like the more pain the better. Yeah. <laughs> Suppress those emotions. Yeah. The book's author is trans and told the Salt Lake Tribune that the picture book was written for a kindergarten to third grade audience. Yeah, that's the, that's the point. Yeah. Kids understand things very easily. Yeah. Especially nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, That's, and they, because they don't have any assumptions, they don't have any bad associations yet, because their life yeah. is just quite easy because yeah. they're still kids. They just roll along with yeah, things. they roll along with things, and it's very easy for them to explain because they don't have any bad associations yet. Yeah. That is probably more impressionable by shutting them out. Shutting down those questions because you think, wait, was I not supposed to ask that question? Is being trans a bad thing? Is puberty a bad thing? That, and that's the it's only going to make them ask more questions, isn't it? I see it this way. It's like a similar thing about sex. Yeah. Like sex education should be there, no question. Not like at kindergarten, but like it's the same thing. Kids ask questions. Parents, instead of just explaining as simple as they can, just explaining it and not hiding it, mm-hmm. would be better because a lot of kids end up if they ask once and the parents shut them down, yeah. they end up not asking again and then yeah. trying to figure out themselves, which is worse. Yeah. If you are worried about what your kids are going to do, if you explain what sex is, oh, they're going to want to do it. Yeah. No, not explaining to kids what sex is is going to make them want to do it. Even more, yes. Or they'll just try and work it out on their own yeah. by going to watch porn yeah. And that is even worse, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, that's the thing. If you are there to teach them everything. And you have to teach them about queer people too. Because yeah. if they're not queer themselves, at least they will know what it is instead of going and trying to figure out and getting to bad sources and yeah. stuff. It is really not hard at all to explain no. to a kid. Just say, some people are born 
boys, some people are born girls. Sometimes the doctor knows that a boy is a boy and a girl is a girl, but sometimes they get it wrong. Yeah. How simple is that? Exactly. And they a kid can question. just say, okay, and run along. Yes, because they don't have that question as like, oh, what? why do they have to identify differently? Like they don't, mm. they, they don't have that, uh, that yet. Yeah. Can I read one last little bit that the author said in this interview? I find in my experience that adults think that term unlocks a lot of confusion in children when it really doesn't. One girl asked me what transgender meant and I explained and she just said, okay, and and moved on. It's only a problem if you think that being transgender is itself wrong and it's not. That's something the parent then has to work through. Well, that's the thing. Assumptions. Yeah. Because you, if you are hate, if you hate LGBT, you see someone acting queer, you see that someone might be transgender, and you immediately have bad thoughts about it, and you just want to debunk all of their existence. Yeah. Just because you hate for no reason, mm. really. Kids don't have that yet. No. Yeah, and that is good, and that is the exact time when you have to tell them things. Yeah. So I googled the book that this teacher read to the class and the description on Goodreads, it sounds so wholesome and pure and there is nothing wrong with having this kind of book in the world. Yeah. It's called Call Me Max and the author's name, I don't think I mentioned the author's name before. No, I don't think so. Okay, so the author's name is Kyle Lukoff, if you're interested, and I believe he also does some of the illustrations. Okay, so... When Max starts school, the teacher hesitates to call out the name on the attendance sheet. Something doesn't seem to fit. Max lets her know the name he wants to be called by, a boy's name. This begins Max's journey as he makes new friends and reveals his feelings about his identity to his parents. Written with warmth and sensitivity by trans writer Kyle Lukoff, this book is a sweet and age-appropriate introduction to what it means to be trans. Yeah, it's it's very good to know that these books exist for kids. Yeah. Back in my day. Mm. So I'm from Lithuania, if someone doesn't know yet. And in Lithuania, LGBT topics are really a taboo. And only recently, articles started to come out about more and more people like revealing who they are and stuff. And it's not just... Most of them are positive. There was recently an article released by a priest, so you can imagine how oh, negative it was. Yeah. But again, everyone just most people don't care about him because who what can like he doesn't know anything, and some people just say that he might be, you know, confused. Grajulis number two. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah. So when I was growing up these topics were never to find a mm. uh, transgender person was always like an insult yeah or like a someone to make fun of mm. like if you call a woman trans it's like an insult to her that kind of a thing like if she looks yeah. if she looks a bit more mask or something mm. you know like a, a bit taller than average or like a bit bulkier than average and people's like oh you have uh, shoulders like a man and you, like it's an insult and it, like yeah it, well we we have that here still as to, well yeah to identify as a transgender in Lithuania i believe it's like it's very hard and i, re- I really feel for those people who find themselves cuz you usually find yourself quite late cuz no one talks about it especially in a good way it's hard enough to be gay to like come out to your your terms and stuff, but yeah. to be trans is even worse. And we never had these books when I was a kid, and I, like I knew that something is different with me, but I had no clue what. Yeah. And it took me twenty seven years to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And still, it's still there's a long long way to go. Yeah. So I wish we had these books, and it's really nice to see that there are some authors yeah people are saying that it's having these kinds of books now this kind of exposure in the media that children can see so easily and have access to so so quickly people are saying that kids are coming out younger and younger by the day 
And like that's where you see a five year old thinking they're trans and these books are to blame because they're aimed at children their age. Again, because we have this concept of gendered product, gendered clothing, gendered oh, no. almost everything. It's really hard for kids. Yeah. Like if a boy likes dolls and pink colour and like more girly stuff. Yeah. Quote unquote <laughs> girly. Uh it's normal he might be confused at this point because if he still wants to be a boy but he likes girly stuff in his brain because his brain is still thinking in simple ways yeah you this or that and he thinks i like girly things so am i a girl then because his parents yeah. kept telling him this is girls pl- toys this yeah. is girls color that's just th- themselves to blame like yeah. the parents to blame or it's the system to blame or the because system. having all the quote girly stuff in one section of the toy shop and all the boy stuff on the other side yeah like you you're just you, you feel lost and i'm thinking about my nephew now my nephew loves peppa pig yeah but all the peppa pig stuff is in the girl section yeah that i don't because I don't peppa's get that. a girl but it's it's a cartoon i know <laughs> They are pigs. <laughs> yeah, that that's the point. I think that's we need to change the binary first and not yeah. just for non-binary people. Yeah. For everyone because then trans people would feel safer. Cis people who not don't like the traditional stuff like boys boy stuff and girls girl stuff. Yeah. It like it's normally feel some some cis people go through doubts and stuff and then they realize wait no I'm just gay <laughs> or something but it's yeah. it, like it's not cool yeah. and it's good that we going slowly but we are going through that yeah, yeah. I I've seen a lot of non-binary kids like uh, parents talking about their kids being non-binary and like quite young as well yeah I don't think there's any harm in dressing them like neutral clothes if they ask to. Because the thing is, if in the future they feel that they, after all, are non, not non-binary or not trans, they could just start doing whatever they want to do, identify as whatever. Like there's, it's not a harmless, it's not a harmful thing. It's not like they're gonna, because you don't give hormones to kids. No. Puberty stoppers. They don't uh, affect you for life. Yeah. It just delays it the delays. process. Yeah, it delays the process. It doesn't stop it from working. And they also don't put children on puberty blockers until puberty has started for them. Yeah, and you have therapists to help yes. to identify that it's actually what they want to be, not just, uh, not like they confuse that terms and stuff. Because, yeah. of course, uh, kids, they still need to, uh, to learn a lot. Mm. And it's normal to think that they might be confused. And I'm sure there are a lot of kids who get confused because it's it's hard to it know hard things. To know, yeah, yeah, for a kid, for us, it's hard to know sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> for a kid, it's even worse. I only worked it out like three months ago. Yeah, yeah. The gender identity clinic in this country, there is still a two year rule before you can apply for puberty blockers and things like yeah. that. I, I believe it. I might be wrong still because I've not looked that much into it, I could still be wrong. But that basically says to me, sorry, you've got to be confused for two years before you can come to us. I mean, I kind of understand the concern and stuff. I know. But yeah, two years, I feel like it's a bit too long. Because yeah. if, if someone has a really bad dysphoria, it might affect their mental health so badly that you might mm. not be able to see them after those two mm. years. Like, it's... It's not a game. And then there's still a waiting list. Yeah. So it's even more than two years before yeah. you actually get help. Yeah, it's It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I um, told you about school. Um, I'm in a lot of uh, teacher WhatsApp groups. Um, they're all LGBT oriented. Uh, and there's a teacher that shared his new school's uh, uniform policy. They have got rid of the binary. They have a gender neutral uniform uh, description now and that basically means that boys can wear skirts if they want to and yeah. that and I think that's great as well story time so when I was in school oh <laughs> we had a uniform of course yeah and we were allowed to wear uh tra- like black trousers on normal days yeah but when there's like a celebrational day like a bank holiday day like something uh, to honor our freedom or something like that 
<laughs> yeah, I know, stupid. And there's like a well, something something uh, exceptional happening that day yeah. in the school. You had to wear a dress. You had to wear a skirt. Skirt. Okay. Yeah. So like white white shirts, uh, a blazer, and a skirt. On the normal day, you can wear anything underneath and the blazer and then like trousers like black trousers mm-hmm. but on that day you had to be like very dressed up yeah and it, it always gave me huge dysphoria and i never understood what's the difference i can put like women who wear pantsuits are very femme sometimes yeah. if they choose to be and it's like i never see a woman who wants to be femme in a pantsuit not looking like one because <laughs> they are made for you to like to look femme because yeah. you can choose you can choose like how do you want it done if, if the pantsuit wasn't designed to be feminine they wouldn't put them in the women's section yeah you would have to go to the men's section to look smart yeah so to have a, like classical tr- we call them in Lithuania, we call them like classical trousers right. they're just like straight and like what what you have to wear to to school yeah that kind of a thing so having that a nice white shirt underneath and having a blazer i was always like what is the problem about me wearing that yeah. instead of a skirt when it looks very sharp smart and it's like it's uh, tidy because they want you to know that you have a vagina between your legs <laughs> it's like Go back to your place. <laughs> <laughs> Get back in your fucking place in the binary. Yeah. Yeah, so this used to be... Even one uh, one girl was quite femme. And she always, like... Uh, she has, like, a big boobs and, like, very, very femme. Yeah. But she didn't like skirts. No. And she had the same much, like... I think uh, the same amount of bad feelings about the skirt as I did yeah. every time it, both of us used to be forced to wear a skirt mm. and told before the day you wear a skirt tomorrow <laughs> yeah it's um, ridiculous isn't it, it is ridiculous it's just a piece of clothing tell tell your uh, kids to wear something like just dress up smart skirts shorts or uh, but as long as they're like not training shorts and training bottoms you'll be Good. Oh, like uh, sports? Yeah, like, like with, a... the, with the three stripes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you like that bit, don't you? With the yeah. three stripes. I, I have that kind of a trousers. Don't you have two pairs? <laughs> I have trousers like that and I have two pairs of shorts like that. <laughs> you wear them yeah. when you're working out. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to watch you work <laughs> out. <laughs> I worked out so hard that yesterday I couldn't get up properly. <laughs> but today I'm good again. Yeah. Well, that's your, that's your own fault anyway, because you opened a window. Oh, yeah, I just got the bin. And I got yourself to blame. Yeah. You have a story for us to I tell. do. It's story time. Gather round, children. <laughs> <laughs> so this is an original story from a teacher's website that I have a subscription to. And again, another teacher in this WhatsApp group I'm in uh, has adapted it to a PDF because the original story is designed uh, as like an interactive thing that uses Flash. Yeah. And so because the Flash thing was being taken down, this teacher stole the story. Rip. and <laughs> <laughs> So this teacher adapted the story and now I can read it for you. Nice. It is called Part of the Party. It is by a woman called Chloe Gilly. You've not read this before. You've never heard of this story. No, I, I've, I've seen it. I'm okay. seeing it for the first time and those koalas are very cute. Okay, so all the, all the quote, people in this book are animals. Okay. Uh, well, just like I like them. <laughs> yes. Not in a bad way. So, are you ready? Yeah. Part of the Party. Carrie, the koala, loves to dance with her two daddies. One morning, a special leaflet arrived. Mayor Imu of Sunny Springs invites you to a mummy and daughter disco to celebrate the love between mummies and daughters. Bring your mummy along for a boogie and show them how much you care. 
Carrie was excited there was going to be a disco in town. The disco was for mummies and daughters. Carrie felt so sad. She didn't have a mummy in her family. She might miss the disco. I'm sure you can go, said Daddy. Ask your friends what they will do. So Carrie went next door to see her friend Katie Kangaroo. Katie lived with her grandma, the best dancer in town. This kangaroo has leg warmers and wristbands. And dumbbells and like doing a... <laughs> she's doing like a workout video on the TV. <laughs> I love it. Oh, and she's still got a pearl necklace on. Yeah. To show, to show that she's a grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go too, said Katie. It does not matter that it's not with a mum. My gran is a great dancer. Carrie asked her friends at school. Carla Crocodile started to cry. My mum is busy at work. My big sister can't take me, she sniffed. It says mummies. That night, Carrie went to bed feeling cross. The leaflet had upset her friends and made them feel unwelcome. The next day, Carrie called a meeting for everyone who felt left out of the disco. Everyone met at the lake. Carrie was surprised. Lots of her friends felt left out and upset. The platypus twins loved to dance. It's only for daughters, moaned Pablo. What about everyone else? Wanda the wombat lived with her daddy. They were a happy little family and her dad loves dancing. Debra Dingo said, I have two mummies. Am I only allowed to take one of them? Kiki the Kookaburra was adopted by Galas and had a huge, big, noisy family who will all come. Carrie knew all of her friends and their families should be at the disco. She told her dad and together they wrote a letter. They posted the letter to the Mayor Emu. A few days later, a letter came back from the Mayor Emu's office. Mayor Emu of Sunny Springs invites you to Family Disco to celebrate love. Bring your whole family along for a boogie to show them how much you care. <laughs> the mayor was sorry he had made them feel unwelcome and had made a new leaflet. Family Disco to celebrate love, all welcome to dance. Carrie, Dad and Daddy chose their outfits and practiced dance moves. That night, the town was lit up with disco lights and everyone was smiling and dancing. It was the best disco ever. Everyone was welcome. Carrie danced all night and felt happy with all of her friends and their different families. The end. It is so nice, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I kind of see another thing as well. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people do make mistakes like misgender or don't think about the circumstances that you might be gay. Yeah. But sometimes it doesn't mean they do it on purpose. I like, know. I know a lot of people do it on purpose to erase us and like try to ma make us feel bad. But some of the people are actually just not used to the idea that LGBT exists because they're not exposed to it enough. Yeah. That's why we shouldn't get too mad when someone accidentally forgets that you exist and just yeah. try to see if they accidentally did that and just remind them that we are here. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that there were so many other different types of families that felt left out as well, it's not just uh, se uh, same-sex parents with... Um, with daughters or uh, lesbian parents with sons that can't yeah. take part. So it was single parents, um, people who were adopted and people who only live with, with their grandparents or something. People can feel left out by that unintentionally as well. Yeah, so we have a lot of... We hear a lot around, like, uh, traditional family values and man and woman only can have a kid and stuff. How many single mothers are out there? How many single fathers are out there? How many single grandparents are out there? Yeah. Things happen and gays and like LGBT is the least of their problems. Yeah. Because like everyone has some everyone has different circumstances. You can't make every family to be as the same. 
Yeah. It's like no, no family is the same, even if it looks the same, it's not. Someone's mom was busy at work. Yeah. I mean, the leaflet may as well have said unemployed moms. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why it's called a nuclear family, but the idea that you have to have... The, the perfect family should be a husband, a wife, and children. Yeah. I don't know why it's called a nuclear family. Never heard that term. I did sociology. Okay. For a year, and then I failed. Whoops. <laughs> but that, but I still remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I think I could remember the guy who first called it a nuclear family. Yeah. I think his name was... Tony Parsons. Why nuclear family? That's that's my question. So you, I just don't know. You never got the answer. No, and I don't think I ever had to Google it. Okay. You just had to remember what it was called. Okay. But I failed the exam anyway. More like toxic family. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> Even if you have a husband or wife, or like you are the nuclear family concept, yeah. you are still great. <laughs> oh yeah. We're not saying there's anything wrong with those kinds just of families. Just don't be a jerk. You're just not the only. You're just not the only kind of family. No, and just don't be a jerk to other families. Yeah, love is love. Love is love. <laughs> uh, this was in the news uh, last week as well. I've been holding off on this topic for this mm. for this episode. So I told you about a show that I grew up with called The Story of Tracy Beaker. Mm-hmm. It was a series of books written by Jacqueline Wilson. She came out as gay last year and apparently she had wanted to come out as gay for ages and she wasn't allowed to because of something called Section 28. I've wanted to talk about Section 28 for ages yeah. on the podcast. I'm going to go on a bit of a rant now, people. Oh, oh. God. <sighs> Margaret Thatcher brought in Section 28 in the 80s. If you've watched It's a Sin, the character Ash mentioned it that his first day in his new teaching job, he was told to go through all the books in the library and pick out the ones that promoted homosexuality. This also links in with the nuclear family thing. Margaret Thatcher brought in this thing that the nuclear family set up was the ideal family and any other kind of family shouldn't be promoted in schools. If you accidentally mention the idea of being gay in a classroom a teacher could have been sacked even though it was an accident yeah right the problem was it was never addressed properly until 2003 i was eight years old in 2003 and the first time i ever saw a gay person was on coronation street and my mom told me oh you shouldn't be watching this oh hide your kids hide the gays are out there (laughs) I had never seen a gay person before, but when I saw it on Coronation Street, I didn't bat an eyelid. You know, it makes me laugh. (laughs) What? It's like, she shouldn't be watching this. And now (laughs) she's probably thinking, like, I shouldn't have told, like, I shouldn't have let her watch that one. (laughs) (laughs) She's just, she's just in a corner sulking. Why did I let her watch Coronation Street so much? (laughs) (laughs) That one, one incident, just like... Yeah. Made you queer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this thing wasn't abolished until 2003. And it had been going on nearly 25 years. That's 25 years of children growing up thinking they are worthless. Yeah. Well into their adulthood. Yeah. it's. I was really surprised when you told me about Section 20. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know that it, it was here. In Lithuania, we don't have that kind of thing. Uh, they didn't think of putting it in because there were no gays out, really. Yeah. No one was out because everyone was already scared. So they didn't put it in. But now, th- across the Europe, uh, countries are legalizing marriages and partnerships between same-sex couples. Yeah. And Lithuania is being a bit pressured by EU. That's good, Because though. human rights. Yes. And trans rights as well. Because trans rights are human rights, am I right? <laughs> am I right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so of course they they want them to get that done as well. Yeah. Because a lot of trans people are not having a great time in Lithuania, and a lot of same sex couples can have a full like full rights as well. Uh, and people are fighting, fighting yeah. the 
quote-unquote propaganda. <laughs> yeah. I think that's why... As opposed more... to the propaganda that Lithuania had to go through when they were part of the Soviet Union. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, when... Pro- you know what propaganda is. Yeah. It's when... I'm calling out a uh, hypocrisy here. Yeah, it's... Yeah, th- that's the thing. We... Oh, I hope no Lithuanians are listening at this point because they're gonna <laughs> throw rocks at me. I think oh. I, I think we as a country bring bad things on ourselves. Right. Because hating and we are not very kind to each other. I'm not saying all of them. There are a lot of Lithuanians who are good, especially like uh, some of the uh, young generation. They're quite open-minded now like uh, how because we have internet and stuff it's yeah it's easier but it's still there are a lot of uh, kids who are raised very badly and abused and of course when you get hate and abuse from your parents you are not happy with yourself and you hate others as well and uh, i think that's all, all those things in history that happened to lithuania happen for a reason because we as a community we not good as a whole nation, we are not that good. Yeah, to, we're not kind to each other, and don't expect kindness from others when you can't help your neighbor. Mm. But hopefully, it will change because like LGBT articles just coming out every day almost to show people that it's not that bad. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's nothing to hate. It's just people being people. Yeah. <laughs> but again. It's a long way to go. Yeah. Well, it's a good thing you're not there anymore. Yeah. People ask why I emigrated. That's why. <laughs> Don't want to fight that war. I can fight that mm-hmm. war from here if it helps. Uh, someone asked me if I want to be interviewed for a um, for a Lithuanian like a uh, website. They they publish articles about LGBT news and yeah. stuff. I can do those things. I can go on someone's YouTube channel and talk about it as long as it helps for other people to. Uh, come out and understand themselves and stuff but I'm not gonna go back and stand there <laughs> to show that I'm here I'm Lithuanian yeah. I don't have that power anymore we, we, you mentioned this the other day um Lithuania doesn't allow you to have dual citizenship yeah so unless something changed but I'm sure that we're still not allowed to have dual because you have to be a patriot <laughs> Like be a patriot. You are Lithuanian and nothing else. Like be a patriot or fuck off. So I fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you said uh, I asked you the other day, would you ever um, get a British citizenship? And you said, yeah, but I'd have to give up my Lithuanian one. We drift off of the topic so bad. We have drifted off way off. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should stop then. Okay. Well, I've barely spoken about this. Yeah. So I explained a bit about Section Twenty Eight, yeah. and I was. I kind of backtracked a bit because I ended up, I started talking about this book yeah, and this author. Jacqueline Wilson was in the closet for a long time and she couldn't come out in the 90s when she wrote these books because then her books would be banned from school libraries and she wanted children to read her books. So she, if she had come out in the 90s, then she would be isolating herself. Okay. It has come out that she wanted... Her, she wanted one of these characters in the books to come out as gay and marry a woman. And the TV version of Tracy Beaker, way back when I was a kid, this woman married a man in, on the TV show. This new version, a sequel about Tracy Beaker's daughter, this woman has finally been able to marry a woman on the show. Yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, as the final episode of My Mum Tracy Beaker premiered on Friday, 12th of February, loyal fans were delighted to see Cam finally confirmed as a lesbian and happily married to a woman named Mary. It was the happy ending we've all been waiting for. So did it premiere, like, on on the TV or on the catch-up? I guess you can it was still a, premiere I guess it, things on the catch-up, too. Yeah, I know. Like what I said about Drag Race... If enough people have watched it on catch up, then they'll decide to air it on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Only when it's been confirmed that people are interested in something. Yeah. And then we just got a load of tweets about it now. It's a sin usurped as the best queer television of 2021 by Cam and Mary's lesbian wedding in my mom, Tracy Beaker. <laughs> We've had both Jojo Siwa and Cam from Tracy Beaker come out this year. This is the start of a gay revolution. <laughs> 
Yeah, hide your kids. Gays are coming. Mm. I should stop saying that. Actually, people... Yeah, you should. (laughs) People have been attacking Jojo Siwa as well. She's done nothing wrong. She's in love. Leave her alone. She... It's not like she didn't do anything wrong. She did a lot of great by coming, being brave and coming out and probably losing a lot of her views because yeah. Karen's told her, uh, their children to stop watching it because, oh my God, she's a lesbian. Yeah. Yeah. But she's, I, I, like, I never watched her videos. And like no. I, know, I know she's for she's more like a for kids audience. Yeah, and it's she's very, very loud. It's very much for kids. She's very loud. She's very ex- expressive. Yeah, she yeah. Wears all over lot, the place. She wears a lot of sequins and glitter and rainbows and bows, everything. bows, and her hair. I think that's a, my favorite part in her. Just bows. Oh, the, the bow collection. She's definitely on acid. <laughs> She's so excited about everything. But it's good. It's good for to show for the kids that you need to be excited to to everything. Like I know sometimes yeah. it's too too much, but that's how kids' attention works. Yeah. You just have to be all over the place all the time. And I understand that it's not for me, it's for kids. Yeah. And by coming out it's really brave and it like I, I was genuinely proud for her even though I don't know her at all. Yeah. Like I've seen just a few snippets of her videos. I don't even know how old she is. Uh, is she like seventeen? S- yeah, something like that. I yeah. would think she's a dancer. Yeah. So I understand all the sequins and stuff. Yeah. But now she's she's got this platform. No. I think that's what I like about her because she's different. She's very sparkly and uh, colorful <laughs> and like all that, and she's gay. Yeah. That debunks the fact that all lesbians are butch. Mm. Because that's, like, some people think that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It is true. A lot of lesbians are butch, but there are a lot of femme lesbians as well. But you just don't know it because they look very femme and they look, quote unquote, straight. Straight. And they're pissed (laughs) off about that, that people tell them, oh, you don't look gay. Stop (laughs) saying that. (laughs) Mm, It's like femme non-binaries as well. Yeah, like, uh, we follow hashtag non-binary on Instagram, and there are a lot of different people coming up, and it's, like, sometimes it's really nice to see the different, like, one time you have someone very, very mask, Hmm. and someone just very, very femme, it's, like, it's really nice to see the variety, that that just exactly shows what non-binary is, just be whatever you want. You do you. Yeah, that's the thing. You are valid. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> can I add something about the Tracy Beaker thing? Yeah. And then, and then we can move on. Okay. They also kissed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because it, it's a wedding. Yeah. You got to have a kiss at a wedding. <laughs> Unless you have masks on. <laughs> so the, the thing is, we have a wedding in like less than eight weeks now. And uh, so the, the government of UK said that by early April, like the lockdown should ease up a bit and weddings should be allowed and like gatherings by, of six people and less should be allowed. But again, you have to still be cautious and wear a mask and stuff. Yeah. And that brings me to that question. We'll be able to kiss? Of course. Because we're probably going to wear of masks. We'll, of course we'll be allowed. No, if we're we not s- kissing the registrar. True. If we stand like two meters apart from them, yeah. we're good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll kiss all over you. And we also booked out the smallest room in the place. So we're only allowed two more, two witnesses in there. Yeah. So we're being COVID safe. Okay. <laughs> we're fine. I also bought a wedding face mask just in case. Yeah, but they are very comfy. So one, you wear one mm-hmm. now. That's nice. No, I only wear that one now because you didn't like the one I bought you. <laughs> so I'm wearing yours now. It's very femme. It's just got it's got polka dots on it. Yeah, femme. <laughs> I'm I'm joking. It's just not my style. Okay. I'd rather wear a black one because mm. my uh, uh, blazer will be black. Yeah. I have one more article about letting kids see queer people. Yeah. So, you know, Disney bought Fox and Fox own all these other studios, which means Disney now own all those studios. Yeah. Well, Blue Sky Studios, I think they made Ice Age. They were in the middle of making a new film with queer protagonists and 
lots of different identities. It was created by the woman, the non-binary person, sorry, who created She-Ra on oh, Netflix. okay. Because we started watching She-Ra the other day. Yeah. Finally. And it is so gay and I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> but because of COVID, the studio have, have gone bankrupt. Yeah. They've lost their money, basically. So this article is kind of... This, Just, this like, article is kind Debating of, if it's worth to keep it or not. Yeah, did Disney want to keep... Did Disney want to work on this film even after just scrap ha- it. E- yeah. Even after having all this backlash about there are other uh, queer characters in other Disney films. What backlash? Uh, so you know when they did the live action Beauty and the Beast? Yeah. Did you watch that one? I haven't seen it. Okay, so do you know the character LeFou? He's like Gaston's psychic little mm-hmm. short guy. Um, they made him gay. Mm-hmm. So by the end of the film, in this massive dance at the end of the film where everything's a happy ending, you can see LeFou dancing with a man. Oh my God. I know. But apparently that was enough to get the film banned in certain countries <laughs> um, or just censored or edited out or whatever. And a lot of parents wanted to shield their children. Like, yeah, just <sighs> shield your children from tox- toxic parenting yeah i know so i'm reading i'm reading the article now it was a first for our studio in a lot of respects and what would have been a first for disney i believe it featured two male leads kissing it featured a not a gender non-conforming lead heroine so the the film was called nimona started out as a web comic created by artist noel stevenson who wrote she ra mm-hmm. In 2015, it was published as a graphic novel by HarperCollins. Its titular character is a shapeshifter with a penchant for chaos and violence. She teams up with villain Lord Ballister Blackheart to go after Sir Ambrosius Goldenloin, the supposed hero. In the series, Blackheart and Goldenloin have a romantic history, and the film adaptation was going to make that clear, including an I love you scene... This sounds so amazing, and I really would want to see this. Yeah, definitely. And I, I'm sure a lot of people would. Yeah. I, I told you something else that Disney did. I showed you something on Disney+, Plus, a little short film, about a guy who was moving in with his boyfriend and then got possessed by a dog to try and teach him a lesson that he had to come out. Yeah. Come out to his parents before yeah. moving in with his boyfriend. It was really sweet. And I cried the first time I saw it because, oh my God, Disney are getting somewhere, finally. Yeah, it, it is very nice, very beautiful. Yeah. And again, people were unhappy with it. Oh, there's a tweet here by Noel Stevenson. Got to see some recent reels and art from Nimona today. Absolutely blew me away. And I'm so heartbroken you won't be able to see it. Blue Sky was making something really special. So Disney is not making it. In a statement, a spokesperson said, Given the current economic realities, after much consideration and evaluation, we have made the difficult decision to close filmmaking operations at Blue Sky Studios. I think that is their long-winded way of saying no. Okay. Not there yet. I don't think they're there yet. They're doing it slowly. Mm. I think they are thinking it's too much for them to show at once maybe so it says that a film was about 75 percent complete with an estimated 10 months of work to go yeah let's blame covid for this (laughs) oh another blue skies employee who worked on nimona said there's no clear connection between the film's content and the studio's closure but they're not sure that they had disney's full support For example, they said Disney hadn't spoken publicly about Nimona as they had for other upcoming releases. Yes, they don't want to piss off Karens yeah, (laughs) and all people who would hate. But the truth is, I kind of believe that we're 50-50 here now. Like, 50% of people might not agree with it, but 50% of people would be happy to see it. Yeah, We're not a minority anymore because we have some allies as well. Like, yeah. we have people who actually don't think it's bad anymore and who understands and stuff. Yeah. So, hopefully in the future we'll get more people to support. Yeah. 
I personally didn't see the support from Disney. They said, I don't think that Disney would be enticed to make it personally. They don't have a great track record of making queer inclusive media. Like their colleague, the employee said the team really felt they were making something groundbreaking and are frustrated that it may never be seen. Aside from the queer themes, they said the studio was using advanced technical production techniques and the final product could have easily won an Oscar. Oh, wow. It would have been huge and it's just devastating that it's not out there, they said. If enough people are angry, maybe the studio will have some incentive to make this wonderful movie. That would be great. So, if you want to see this, email Disney and yeah. say, make this movie because I'm getting <laughs> mad. I hate to I hate to like be a like a Debbie Downer or something, but Disney have probably already thrown out the film. I don't think they do that though. Just in case. <laughs> oh, just in case. <laughs> Throw everything and burn everything just in case people start getting mad and want to see Is that like when all the fans of Brooklyn Nine-Nine brought the show back after one day? Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that is all of my articles for this topic. Okay, I think we've done then. Yeah? If you know of any more uh, instances where people haven't wanted children to see queer things, please get in touch. Or... If you have a story about children seeing queer things and having no problem with it, please get in touch as well. We want to hear your stories. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Is that a nice sign off? Yeah. Okay, let's end this. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Non-Binary Show. You can follow and message us on Instagram at non.by.neri or over on Facebook at facebook.com slash non.by.neri.show. We're posting a lot more podcast updates and stuff from our personal lives, but most of the time you'll see queer memes. You can also send us a voice message on Anchor at anchor.fm slash non-binary. That's all one word, no dots. Send us a voice message and you might be in our next episode. See you next time. Bye. Bye.